Hi there, welcome to the Beaten Trail, and on this episode, we are going to take you to Tall Pines in Andover, New York. Hi there, it's Mike from the Beaten Trail. We're headed north to head up and see Redbeard and Melissa, and we'll be taking a ride up to upstate New York. Should be fun, so stay tuned for more, and and we'll see you on the trail soon. And a quick note from our sponsor, Evolution Power Sports in Reading, Pennsylvania. Please check them out for your parts requirements and your pre-owned quality off-road and on-road vehicles. Let them know the beaten trail sent you. Also, with a click of the button, check out our online merchandise, shirts and hats and more. So we started out in our friend's camper on our way up to Tall Pines and it was about a four or five hour drive from the North Jersey area and once we got up there not too bad as far as access but do check if you have a longer camper some of the roads are preferred and some are definitely no goes so check out the website the registration area not very well labeled there's a little sign there if you've never been there before it's hard to find it's just a little farm they do have an adequate space for a little shop for you know stickers and t-shirts and where to register you will need your driver's license you can check out the cost per day but they did have a, a decent setup we drove down to the generator lot and it was well mapped Hey, it's Mike from the Beaten Trail. We're here at Tall Pines, New York. Uh, it's about a four hour drive, maybe a little more from New Jersey area. And we're going to explore the trails here and tell you a little bit about riding and camping. They got a wash station. They have a pro shop uh, is for stickers and some stuff. Certain days they have a kitchen open there. But we're gonna ride some of the trails and tell you a little bit about uh, what it's all about. So. Stay tuned and we'll show you a little more. So we headed out onto the 70 miles of trails and mud bogs in search of some interesting riding. The website states it's about 1,600 acres and I would have to say half of those are accessible by anybody and then there's probably another good amount that is non-recovery area. And we didn't really go into these areas, they were deeper mud bogs out into the woods and we opted not to test our abilities and they had said that some of the locations do require a storm, so not to push your luck and so we opted not to. But the trails are well labeled, there are some that just come out onto a farm road and there's adequate stop signs. The speed limit in most cases are, is going to be 20 miles an hour you will notice that if you are in an area that is listed as a campsite they will ask you to have a five mile an hour forward speed to keep the dust down and that's the purpose of having speed limits there not only for safety but to make sure that you don't fully dust out your camping neighbor we had our Honda everything pretty much was accessible it was dry, so it has been a dry season in the northeast, so a lot of locations where there would be, I don't know, a foot of water or mud, it was pretty much just a dry little ravine. Some of these here were a little bit tight for the 68 inch unit. We enjoyed it nonetheless, and I think short of a little bit of maintenance on the trail, like maybe a chainsaw with some of the roots that stick out, I think the trails are fine. Yeah, there's really not much to complain about. They are wide enough. They do have some hills. It is an excessive amount of open trails. So if it is a hot day like we were doing, you're going to run into a lot of sun. Although you can ride all the way up until the sun goes down as per regulation. And then of course uh, it's camping and relaxing and chill time. And they don't want you to go ahead and make too much noise after hours. It's 
Let's see it. So while we don't know the origin of this location, Underwear Hill certainly lives up to its name. We stopped and took some pictures. Very nice. And admired the variety of clothing that was hanging in the trees. You like Underwear Hill? Excuse me, sir. Do you like Underwear Hill? <laughs> sir, sir, sir. We really like an answer. Answer your Uncle Michael. Answer Uncle Michael. Huh? Do you, do you like Underwear Hill? <laughs> of the many open roads, we really didn't find too many people there since we were there during the weekday. I can imagine with hundreds of campers, it probably would be a lot busier. We took a ride into town. Town access is limited, but it is well posted with ATV access and trail notifications, as well as reminding you that the speed limit is 20 miles an hour, no matter where you go in town. So please adhere to that and try to enjoy some of the local stores and facilities did see that there was a farmer's market down there on certain days. We did not see it. Come down for fuel helps the local economy as well, as well as a few other stores that are down there. You can check it out. It's pretty basic. It is a welcome addition to any ATV park. Uh, you can go into town and get some supplies as needed. So we finished riding Tall Pines. It's about 70 miles worth of trails. Maybe 20-30% are county roads and just farm roads. There is a speed limit. 20 miles an hour when you're off of the property. There's 5 mile an hour limit areas that are for camping to keep the dust down. But I'd say half of the trails are under tree cover. The other half are open. So there'll be farm roads. You're not supposed to ride in the meadows or anything. We are camped here at a campsite, and we are in the generator lot because we stayed here and we were allowed to run our generator. But if you want to camp here, you can camp in a tent. You can camp in cabins, and they range anywhere from $60, $70 a night all the way up to $600, and it really depends how many people you have. There are porta potties throughout the location. There, uh, You'll notice you're riding through cornfields, and everything is, is well labeled. You pretty much just want to assume that if it says no recovery past this point, uh, you're going to have some pretty deep water if you don't have snorkels. So we were told that. We saw some. Just definitely stay out of that unless you have snorkels. We had a great time here. We would recommend that it's great for families, beginners. There is some intermediates. They do say some are black trails, but they're not really black trails. There's a lot of roots and a lot of deep water. That's that's how black is defined here. Black trails are not steep hill climbs. There's very minor hill climbs. There's some good stuff, but it is a great place. Uh, 70 miles. We did miss a couple trails, but there are some that are way out and they're seasonal and they're open and closed depending on DCNR runoff and partner properties that are adjacent to here. So 
Hope you enjoyed the review and we'll see you out there on the trail. Thanks. Them are uh, over. Uh, yeah, take it again. Forget it. <clears throat> A ride to North. Ugh, try that again. You guys have fun.